Hi, thanks for tuning in. If you haven't looked at Genesis 4, verse 17, all the way through the end of chapter 5, go ahead and pause this video and read through that, and uh, we'll wait for you until you get back. Thanks. Welcome back. Let's go on ahead and look at Genesis chapter 4, and we're going to get an idea of where this new person in the story, Seth, comes from. Let's look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 25. Genesis chapter 4, verse 25, it says, Adam made love to his wife again, and she gave birth to a son and named him Seth, saying, God has granted me another child in place of Abel since Cain killed him. Now, the genealogies of Seth and Cain are very interesting. You know, I don't know what the big deal is with parents in Genesis 4 and 5, but hello, it really looks like Cain's descendants and Seth's descendants both bought the same three-page baby book. I mean, the names are very similar, but we can't look at it simply, right? These are real people. These are real names. Um, we're going to look at these genealogies and kind of dissect them just a little bit. Here's the lineage of Cain. Now, Cain is the one who killed his brother Abel, and he it was cursed by God, and we'll get into that in, I think, the next video or the one after that. But Cain had a son named Enoch. Enoch had a son named Irad. Irad had a son named Mahujael. Mahujael had a son named Methushael, and Methushael had a son named Lamech. Lamech had four children from two wives, three sons and one daughter. Their names uh, for the sons were Jabel, Jubal, and Tubal Cain, and their sister was named Nama. Now, the lineage of Seth has an awful lot of names that sound like Cain's children. Let's go through those. Seth had a son named Enosh. Enosh had a son named Kenan. Kenan had a son named Mahaliel. Mahaliel had a son named Jared. Jared had a son named Enoch. We'll be talking about Enoch. Uh, probably next video or the video after that. Enoch had a son named Meth uh, Methuselah, and Methuselah had a son named Lamech, different Lamech than Cain's great-great-great-grandson. Uh, and Lamech had a son named Noah. We'll be talking about Noah in a little bit. Now, these children were given names that are actually real words, real words. It's very similar to parents today who named their children Faith or Hope or Charity or something like that. So we don't know for sure uh, this side of eternity, but maybe maybe it would help us if we knew uh, these names because that could give us a little hint of what the mindset of each generation was as it named its children. So here's the lineage of Cain with the meaning of their names translated into English. Now, before I get into this, there is a guy named Bruce Metzler. Now, Bruce Metzler was a Bible scholar. Um, I've read a couple of his, his works and listened, listened to a few of his sermons, his lectures. Um, he's a very interesting guy, comes across as very smart, uh, but he actually um, went through and made a list of names of uh, Seth's children. And um, I would just say when people define a name, take it with a grain of salt, okay? We are not dealing with absolutes because a lot of these words, we just don't know what the root of the word actually means. So um, this name, as I go through these names, do take it with a grain of salt a little bit because we don't know for sure that these are the exact definitions of what these names are. All right, just wanted to throw out this that little disclaimer. Eve named her son Possession. That's what Cain means. Cain named his son Dedicated. All right, Dedicated is what Enoch means. Enoch named his son Fleet, which is interesting. Um, I guess maybe they were building a lot of ships back then or something, I don't know. So Fleet is the name for Irad. Irad named his son smitten by God. So some type of punishment maybe was happening. I don't know. Uh, but 
smitten by God is what Mahujael means. Mahujael named his son, who is God? That's an interesting name. That's what Methushael means, who is God. Methushael named his son Powerful. Now that's a pretty cool name, Powerful. That's what Lamech means. Lamech named two of his sons River or Stream. Um, that's really interesting to name. You have, you have three sons in total, and two of them have the same type of name, Jubal and uh, Jabal. Uh, that they mean river or stream. Another one he named Lead by Possessions, and his daughter was named Beautiful. So those are really interesting names. Uh, but let's look at what Cain did in his life before we get into Seth's genealogy. Here we go. Let's look at Genesis chapter 4, verse uh, 11 in chapter 4, so we can get a running start on Cain's story. So Cain has killed his brother Abel. Um, God has said, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Verse 11, you were under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother, brother's blood from your hand. Verse 12, when you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. That's verse 13. Verse 14, today you're driving me from the land and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth and whoever finds me will kill me. So Cain knows how bad off this curse is. And he thinks that because he's the first murderer, whoever finds him is going to take vengeance because of what he did to Abel. But God tells him otherwise. The Lord said to him, not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. We have no idea what this mark is. So any guesses that people have, it is purely a guess. Absolutely a guess. We don't know what the mark was that Cain had so that um, no one would kill him. But Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. And Cain made love to his wife. She became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Cain was then building a city and he named it after his son, Enoch. So I just want to, to talk about that for just a minute. Cain eventually went out and actually built a city, not a home an entire city, and he named the city after his son. So skipping down, uh, we won't go through all those names again. Let's go on ahead and skip down to Lamech. Lamech is Cain's great, great, great grandson. I mean, several generations down. And Lamech is uh, going to be pretty famous, actually. Let's look at this. Lamech is interesting. He marries two women. One of them's name is Ada, and, and her, names mean, her name means ornament or beauty. So she's a, hopefully she lived up to her name. She should be a beautiful woman. The other one was named Zilla, which means uh, shade or shadow. And Lamech, the, the scriptures say, killed, and he bragged about it. But his name does mean powerful, so maybe he just tried to live up to his moniker. We don't know. His three sons all had major, major accomplishments. They were the first, or they were experts in um, living in tents while raising livestock. They uh, played, uh, one of them played musical instruments like the harp and the flute. The other one was forging tools of bronze and iron. All in all, these are really successful guys, right? Seth's family, on the other hand, um, they have an interesting lineage as well. Let's go on to talk about that. Let's start with their, what their names mean in English. Uh, Seth's children are going to be found in Genesis chapter 5. Here we go. So Eve named Seth, or e Eve named her son the replacement son for um, Abel, who died. She named him substituted. 
Now that's an interesting name, substituted. Seth was a substitute for Abel. And, and then Seth named his son Common Man. Enosh means common man. Enosh named his son Possession, similar to Cain. That's what Kenan means. So Kenan named his son Praise of God. That's what Mahalel means. Mahalel named his son Descent or Decline. That's what Jared means. I guess humanity is kind of declining. I don't know. Uh, Jared named his son Dedicated. That's what Enoch means, and we're going to be getting more into Enoch in a, another video. Enoch named his son Man with the Weapon, or figuratively, One with the Shoot of Growth. Now, that's a very weird name, but that's what Methuselah means. And the Methuselah named his son Powerful. He, that's what Lamech means. So we've already talked about this one guy named Lamech. This is a different Lamech. Um, and so Lamech named his son Rest. And that's what Noah means. We'll get to Noah in another video. So what did Seth and his lineage accomplish? We already looked at Cain's lineage. I mean, there's some successful people. We're talking building cities, uh, musical instruments, forging things out of bronze and iron, uh, very successful, living in tents and having lots of livestock. What about Seth's family? Well, there are quite a few years between the births of Cain and Seth. So we know that there has to be a, a lot of reproducing, a lot of people on the planet by then. And we're told in Genesis 4.26 that when Seth started having children, men began to call on the name of the Lord. Now that's interesting. When Seth started having children, men started calling on the name of the Lord. I, I, we don't know what that means. We don't know all of the details. Just that when Seth started having children, they started calling on the name of the Lord again. So that's really neat. We know that Enoch uh, walked with God his whole life and that God actually um, did not allow Enoch to die but he simply took him. That's interesting. Other than that, we really don't know any specifics about Seth's genealogy. So, so what? I mean, what does that mean? Okay, so we looked at Cain's genealogy. We looked at Seth's genealogy. Big deal, right? Well, let's compare these two lineages. And when we do, we're going to find two very unique family trees. The first one, Cain's lineage, was full of industrious men and pretty women. It experienced the wealth of building a city. It experienced the power of being above the law. Lamech was above the law. He killed people and wasn't punished for it. It, it experienced the success of being the best in several areas of importance. They were the Kennedys, the Rockefellers, the Fords, the Gates of their time. This other lineage, the, the line coming from Seth, had righteous men in it. One of them never saw death. The rest of them, every single name in Seth's lineage, besides Noah, died before the flood not during the flood, before the flood. So that's interesting. God did not allow any of them to die in the flood. He didn't punish any of them. God only chose one of these lines, though, to continue humanity after the flood. So which line is it going to be? Which line? Is it going to be the family that's full of worldly success, the one that's full of fame and wealth and power? I mean. Our, our standards would probably have picked that one. But that's not the one that God chose. God chose the family that was righteous. God chose to bless and preserve the righteous family of Seth. Now that's something to remember. Another thing that we should take the time to talk about for just a moment is this. 
Lamech from Cain's line, he boasted this warning about himself. He said, if someone who kills Cain is punished seven times, then the one who kills me will be punished 77 times. That's a bold statement. But there's this one time in history where a righteous man from the lineage of Seth put a radical twist on what Lamech said. See, he was asked, how many times should we forgive someone? Seven times? And his answer was simple. He said, I'll tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Lamech went to the extreme to say that he would never forgive. He would always take revenge. But there's someone else, someone else thousands of years later after Lamech, who put a radical twist on what Lamech said. He said that we should go to extremes to forgive. Of course, that only could mean one man, right? And you know who it is. That's Jesus. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you wouldn't mind, I really would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and left a comment. If you uh, gave me a like, that would be wonderful. If you rang the bell so that you could be notified of future videos, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in. You're a blessing to me. I hope you have a great day and be blessed.